Okay, let's start making a weapon. I'm going to bring in an image for the viewport background. So I go to Views, Viewport Background. And I want to use the right viewport. Go to Files, pick the image I want to use, click Open, make sure Match Bitmap and Lock Zoom and Pan are both selected, and click OK. You can see I've already done that, but that's how you would get it in there. And there it is in the right viewport. So we can go ahead and start creating the model. I use cylinders for these weapons uh, using edge creation. Six sides because you want to keep a nice low poly count. Uh, for games you really need to watch your poly count to keep the frame rates acceptable. So we start making the barrel. Drag a cylinder of about the same size as the barrel. Rotate it 90 degrees. You can see that down at the uh, bottom of the screen. Now I can go into the Modify panel and start stretching that cylinder to approximate the length of the barrel. Now I'm going to come into the viewport, or the perspective viewport, and you kind of have to decide if you want the flat part on the top or if you want the point on the top of the barrel. And I think I want the point on the top, so I'm going to rotate that cylinder 30 degrees. I think that'll uh, better approximate the geometry of the barrel. So let's go in and start stretching this a little bit. When you start with a cylinder, you have to convert it to an editable mesh. So you can start uh, pulling the verte vertices. And rotating is distorting the barrel a little bit, so let's not do that. Let's just grab vertices and start moving them. So you can see I'm in editable mesh, vertex editing mode, and you just grab the vertexes you want to move and stretch them around. Again, this is going to be a very rough shape. Probably won't be a usable weapon, but it'll give you the idea. And let's start another cylinder now for the grip. We can do the same thing, drag it out to it's about the width of the grip, stretch up to give the cylinder some height, and then rotate it into place. Again, 90 degrees, you can see that happening right above the uh, cursor there, and also at the bottom of the screen. Again, convert it to an editable mesh, Go into vertex mode. Now you can either grab the yellow square and change the X and Y simultaneously, or grab the arrow handles and change the X and Y independently. So now we're going to stretch the grip up until it's in the thickest part of the barrel, right in the middle. And we can drop it right there. Now we'll uh, move the vertices on the bottom to get that angle at the bottom of the grip. Just grab the vertices you want. The important thing is, you'll see on the right side, ignore back facing is not checked. And that lets you grab the vertices that are behind the vertices that you can see. Now we'll go ahead and save it. Show all viewports again and see what we got. Pretty basic shapes right now. So let's leave vertex editing mode and we're going to squash that barrel a little bit because it's probably not as wide as it is high. And the same thing with the grip. Leave that a little thicker than the barrel. And let's see. I want to bring that center section up a little bit, right to where you can see it change color in the photograph. That'll more closely uh, match the shape of the barrel. And go back out. 
swing that thing around. Let's see what we got. Yeah, it looks better. Let's start adding some detail pieces here, like the sight and the hammer. Start with the back sight here. Now I'm getting some weird memory message. Like as I'm zoomed in so close. Let's we'll start with a box. Again to approximate the shape of the piece. drag out until it looks about the right width for what we want. Now I'm going to go into wireframe mode so I can see this better because I want to divide this box up a little bit so I can uh, get the little V-shaped divot in the middle. So I'm dividing the box up by increasing the number of height segments. This will allow me to grab these individual uh, vertices here and give it that V-shape in the center. Now I can convert to editable mesh, go into the vertex mode, and pick the center vertices here. And drag them down. Now I'm going to squash it like it is in the picture and that looks pretty close yeah, not too bad let's go ahead and align it I'll just have to guess until we get the right one there we go Align it to the center of the barrel. Now let's go on to the hammer. And for odd shapes, uh, we can do the line and then convert this line. Oops. That is a renderable line. Let's take that renderable off, all those off. So I just want to trace the outline here. And then click on the one that you started with to close the spline. Now I right click on it and convert it to an editable mesh. Go into face object editing and I want to select all of them. Now we're going to extrude this face to give it a, the hammer the depth. I just drag the slider over there until it's about where I want it. That looks good. Then we leave the face uh, editing mode. Now you'll see we have a little normals problem. It looks closed on one side but open on the other side. So we're going to go into the modifier list and select cap holes and that will close that gap. Now again we want to align to the barrel so everything's nice and centered. So now we've got a couple of the detailed pieces here. Go ahead and add the front sight. Then we'll go ahead and just do it with a box. And just dragging some depth into it. Go ahead and 
you see we still have the heights. Height segment set to four from the last one we did, so that's going to give us a lot more polys than we need for this little piece. So let's bring that back down to one. But we'll go ahead and increase the width segments to let us get a little closer to the appearance of the site there instead of just a real square looking thing. Again in vertex editing mode, just grab and drag. And that looks pretty close. Now we can align this the same way. Align Pick the object you want to align it to, and which axis you want to align it on. And there you have it. Let's go ahead and uh, map a texture onto this. What we're going to do is collapse all these little pieces into a single piece. So choose a piece, hit attach list, select all and attach. And that'll make all those individual pieces into one single unit. That's very important uh, to turn the model into a Z3D object because it has to be a single unit. So let's go ahead and open the material editor and add a bitmap. Let's see, we'll just use the background image at this point. This is not going to be the final uh, texture. That will be the final texture, but we're not going to use that right now. Just for this purpose, we're going to just use the background image that we've been using to trace from. going to hit Show Map in Viewport and apply it to the object. Now that looks pretty craptacular. So we're going to go up to Modifiers, add a UV coordinate UVW map. You can see the gizmo is showing you what axis it's on. So we want Y, then we click Fit. That's pretty close, but not exact. So we go to Modifiers, UV Coordinates, Unwrap UVW, and over to Edit. UVW coordinates are not the same as the XYZ coordinates of the model. These are corresponding to those vertices, but this is just for the texture. And Anything you move on this screen is not going to change the shape of your model. So we can move things around here just a little bit, try to line it up a little better, make it a little more nice to look at in the viewports. Just move things around. Whoa. So I can scale the UVW coordinates here. You can see however I want won't change the shape of the model, it'll just change what part of the uh, texture gets mapped to that part of the model. Let's get the hammer on here a little better. Let's just get it all in that golden area.
No, I'm just trying to drag all these individual vertices so they sit right on the image of the weapon. We are going to have to redo this to the actual texture of the DDS or TGA that we are going to use for the final weapon model. But see, that looks a little better. That's a little more fun to look at. Okay. Quick render. That looks pretty nice. Okay, the modeling is pretty much done, so let's go ahead and map the real texture that we're going to use for the game model onto the weapon. And let's see, well, let's do this first. The pivot point. Pivot point. That is a very important piece of the weapon. You have to align the pivot point. X, Y, and Z to the game world's X, Y, and Z and you have to put the pivot point itself in the right position so when the player is holding it in his hand it looks like he's actually holding it in his hand and pointing it out. Um, that pivot point is right about here kind of in the middle of the grip right behind the trigger. That's kind of an eyeball thing But you have to do that. Go into the utilities panel, click reset X form and reset selected. Now, I'm going to hit M and open up the materials panel. Go ahead and erase this so you can bring in a new one. Go down to the diffuse. This little box here will bring in a bitmap, go bitmap, pick the DDS that we're going to use, and there it is. So go back up to the top level of the material, click the show and viewport, and apply the material. Close the material editor now. Now we want to add a modifier, UV coordinates, unwrap UVW. What that's going to allow us to do is pretty much the same thing we did for the viewport, but we're going to take it one step further for this model. So we try to maximize that. Now let's see mapping. Normal mapping. Now this is up to you however detailed you want to get. If you go left-right mapping, basically you have the right and left side of the weapon. Or if you want to get a little more detailed, you go to normal mapping, box mapping. That gives you six sides basically. It divides the, web, uh, the model into a cube basically. Uh, so you get your left and right, top, bottom, front, and back sides. So we have to decide what we want to do. And of course there are all other kinds. You can do that but good luck trying to figure out what those pieces correspond to. Yeah that won't work. So I think for this one we'll just go mm, left, right. Nice and simple. So let's see. 
since the left and right side of this weapon actually have different a different image you can see I combine them into this one image I'm going to map the left side to one of them and the right side to the other. I don't know which ones those are yet, but I'm just going to give it a shot. Go back and look at it and see how it looks. So I'm going to flip this vertically and move it out of the way. And bring this one up here. Bring this one down here. Let's see if I got the right sides going here. Okay, I can read the writing on that side. Spin it around. Alt middle mouse button lets me spin this. Hit render. Can't really see that there. So the viewport lighting. Clap. Okay. We can read that, so it looks like I got the right sides. <clears throat> then we'll go back into the UVW editing and start moving stuff around, line things up. In the UVW editing screen, we have. The UVW vertices. Each one of these corresponds to a vertices, a vertex on the model, an XYZ vertex that actually creates the geometry of the model. This just tells you, tells Max, where I want this vertex on the model to be on the texture. So I can do whatever I want on this screen and the model is not actually going to change shape. Up here, these are the tools. I don't know the hotkeys. Uh, you can move all directions. You can limit to just moving horizontally or vertically. Rotate, scale, same thing, you can scale uh, in all directions or just scale horizontally and vertically. Those are really the only tools I use for this mapping. Let's go ahead and bring this down a bit. Yeah, I screwed that up so I kind of reset things a little bit. Uh, so I went over the controls up here, I think. Let's uh, maybe reflip this thing. Flip vertical. Get it out of the way. Move this one back up here. And this one back over here. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and map this one side and I'll get the gist for the second side. I think I will start by trying to stretch that out. Try that. That looks pretty good. I'll scale it up. A little more. Yeah, that's pretty close. Let's see. Okay, pretty close. So now we can do a little more detail work. Go back into edit. Zoom in real tight. This one. There we go. I 
pick the trigger. And just grab all these and scale them down a bit. So it's all inside that area. I think I missed them again. And I don't want that right there on that piece of gold thing. So I'm going to move those over out into there. See what that looks like. Yeah, not spectacular. But you get the idea. Okay. Phone call interruption there. Get the hammer set back up the way we had it on the other map. Drag everything in there so I don't get any the background color showing through there. And I'll move these over there. Move that out here. And I'll grab all this stuff. that out there. What the heck? Now you see we are just doing the sides. If we wanted to do the box modeling then we could you know, put the hole in the barrel all that stuff. But this is pretty close. Get that grip up a little bit better. One more try. See how that looks. Okay. That gives you the idea how to get it done. I'm going to go ahead and shut this off and go ahead and do the other side. Then we'll go on to exporting it as a Z3D object. And how to get it in the game and get it in the player's hand. Alrighty. Go ahead now and finish this up. What we want to do now is uh, add muzzle flash to the weapon and then we need to create a dropped version of the weapon which will lay flat on the ground when you drop it. Uh, let's go ahead and do the muzzle flash first. To do that, let's see, let's go to front viewport zoom in here on the tip of the barrel which is this six-sided cylinder right here and we need to add
a poly. So I'm going to use n-gon, three-sided, and I'm just going to draw a very small triangle right there. Now let's convert it to editable, editable mesh. Now we need to move it to the tip of the weapon. And I just want to center it right there. So you can see that here. You now have that little triangle right in front of the end of the barrel. That is going to tell the game where to put the muzzle flash. So now let's go ahead and apply that texture to it. In any of the weapon ZA files you'll find this muzzle DDS texture. All it is is a transparent texture but it has to be mapped onto that single poly in front of the weapon to tell the uh, game where to put the muzzle flash. So I went ahead and extracted uh, muzzle DDS out of one of the weapon ZA files and I just put it in my working directory. Then I'm just going to go ahead and apply it. You can see it turn green. It'll be transparent in the game, but it's green here. Now I'm going to convert the gun to an editable mesh so I can attach that muzzle flash poly onto the tip of it. So I'm back in editable mesh, I hit attach, click on the muzzle flash poly, match material IDs to material, make sure that's checked, and condense material and IDs is checked, click OK. Now, I'm going to reset the X form again. Now we can export selected. This will give us our model that shows up in the player's hand with the muzzle flash. Yes, I want to replace that. Save. Now let's go ahead and make the drop model. We're going to go into the hierarchy panel, effect object only, and we want to rotate it so it's laying flat on the ground. And now we want to move it so the pivot point is at the lowest part of the model. Otherwise, uh, this half of the model, the lower half of the model, would be underground in the game. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that up. So the pivot point it is right there at the bottom. Go back to the utilities, reset X form, reset selected. Now I'm going to go ahead and export selected and choose toot pistol slash drop. And that'll let me know which one is the hand model and which is the drop model. So I'm going to save. I'll replace it. OK. And that's about it for Max. Let's go ahead and open up our items. items. There we go. Our toot pistol IDF. And that's where we're going to tell it what model to use as the drop version. And I'd already done that, so that's the name of the mesh when it's on the ground. Toot pistol drop. And then down here is the name of the mesh in the character's hand. And that's it. And then we can load it into the game and see how we did. Okay, now we're back in the game. I'm going to go ahead and check out my new models. There's my pistol, looks pretty good. Let's check out the muzzle flash. Maybe some shooting. From that viewpoint. Go ahead and drop it and check out our drop version. 
That's pretty good. Looks like it's on the ground flat. Oh. There it is. And it's flat on the ground. Perfect. Alrighty.